Let's start with the quick reminder that if you guys enjoyed this video as you're sitting through and watching it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And also subscribe if you haven't already. We've got the Corvette here, nice and comfortable, protected from the elements of the outside. Just recently snowed, and you can actually see a lot of that snow is melting, which is a good thing. I do really enjoy snow, but I don't enjoy what it does to your vehicles. And unfortunately, that is something that is completely unavoidable, especially when you make YouTube videos that involve your vehicle. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet on this one because I wanted to avoid taking the truck out onto the roads right now because of all the salt and brine and everything that they put on the road to melt the snow. But unfortunately, I don't think that that's gonna be able to happen with what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Now, one quick reminder before we hit the road, and that is that the Ultimate Enthusiast giveaway number two is now live. This is the Dream Build kickoff. We are giving away $2,000 of hard cash to any one of you that could possibly win. Now, how this works is anything that you buy on the Enthusiast site, i.e. a hat, for instance, would equate to X amount of automatic entries that you would get. So for every $5 that you spend, you get one automatic entry. The idea behind this giveaway is the fact that we want to help you kick off your dream build. $2,000 cash, you could do a lot of things to get your vehicle to where you want it to be with that money. Or you could just make up all that money that you just recently spent on the holidays. One way or the other, it's a win-win. So if you guys didn't see my last video, we did a few modifications to the Z06. Those modifications being brand new side markers that are paint matched. These are through Vet Lights. Very, very nice side markers. They have LED strips that run the entire length of the actual piece itself, which is very nice. Plus, we have some new tail lights on the Z06. These are LED tail lights. Obviously, you can't tell that they're LEDs right now, but they are LEDs and they look absolutely astonishing. And then lastly, we did a set of 6K 60 watt LEDs in the fog lights of the vet and matching hue from the fog lights to the projectors, A, look very good, it's very stylish, and B, actually serve as a very functional improvement for lighting performance. So to anybody that has a C6 or a C7 Corvette out in the audience, check out Vet Lights, definitely gonna be worth your while. So today we are going to focus on the Duramax. I think the truck's looking at me and it looks a little bit sad because it was kicked out by the newest addition to the family. But I think that it understands because the Duramax could use a little bit of paint reconditioning. Not that the condition of the paint is terrible, but it has little swirl marks here and there. So I figured that I would put it outside because it's gonna get a proper detail come spring. And uh, the paint on the Corvette is literally immaculate and I would have felt very bad about leaving this outside. So we're gonna focus on the Duramax today. I do have the block heater plugged in. This is the first time I broke it out for the season, obviously being that it snowed. Uh, so this thing should start up relatively quickly. But what would the good of the vlog be without a cold start? You know, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought it was gonna go into high idle mode because it's like 30 something degrees out right now, but I guess that the truck's just not picking up on it. Oh well, I guess that's gonna have to be for another video. And last but not least, we are bringing the gimbal along today because we're gonna shoot some intro shots with this thing. Now, you guys already saw that in the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Getting very familiar with this thing, it's a handheld gimbal that I bought, three axis gimbal, and I'm really enjoying it, which is nice. Now, one of the funny things that I've uh, found out over the ownership of this truck, having this Edge CTS2, when I remote start the truck, it doesn't turn on. But when I start the truck from the ignition, like standard, it turns on no problem. I have no idea why that is. Does anybody know why the Edge CTS2 does not power up with the remote start? I'm thinking it's because the signal that's relayed from the remote start only triggers something specific, i.e. the ignition, but I don't know. If you know the reasoning behind why that is, drop a comment below, I'd really like to know, because I honestly have no clue. All right, guys, so just to prove the point of how dirty your truck can become when you run 14 wides, we're driving literally less than a mile away to go get some fuel in the truck because she's a, th a thirsty girl. Let's get over to the gas station and we'll see just how dirty the truck is from this very short drive. So for those of you that aren't aware of what it's like to live in a climate that has four seasons, the roads are typically black. Well, you can see right now that they're kind of white. The reason that they're white is because of all the salt and brine and other chemical additives or mixtures that they use to basically melt snow or to basically prevent snow from sticking, right? That's what they do before snowstorms. Well, yeah, the roads are white right now because of that reason and it really just completely beats the shit out of your vehicles. And that's one of the reasons why I absolutely can't stand driving my truck or any one of my cars, for instance, except Bartholomew, of course, in the winter time because it just totally beats the shit out of your vehicle. Now, we didn't do too bad. I think I hit like one puddle. You can see that's the result of a, a puddle that was probably six inches wide. But for the sake of the vlog, we will prevail on the one thing that I totally forgot about, a diesel additive. And that's actually something that I put in the truck all the time in the winter. Fortunately, there's an auto parts store that's right there. So I'm gonna run over there real quick and grab what we need. All right, 
so this is the stuff that I was talking about, guys. This is Power Service Diesel Fuel Supplement. What it has is a seatine boost in it. So for any of you guys that aren't familiar with seatine and what it is, it's basically like the octane associated with diesel fuel. There's a regulation that was passed some time ago regarding components, let's just say, the build of the chemicals of diesel fuel. Now most diesel fuel is at the lowest seatine possible and that's a 40, I think it's a 40 grade. Whew, I'm all out of breath. Because what it does is it ups the seatine, so it's a boost, which basically helps to add lubricity to the fuel, right? It ups the quality of the fuel so you can look at it from the same terms as like an 87 octane versus like a 93. Yeah, guys, I don't think that I'm being a little overzealous by any means. I mean, look at the abundance of salt. It's literally just doused. It's everywhere. Ah, geez, talk about being salty, huh? <laughs> I saw you creeping up. I was like, I don't know if this guy knows who I am or yeah. if he has no clue who I'm I am. I'm out of the area. I just, I'm here for a family reunion. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, yeah. And you follow the channel? Yeah. What are the chances of that, man? I don't know. That's incredible. Cool, man. Well, it was nice meeting you guys. And that is a true fan. Very, very cool. Honestly, guys, look at the setting that we're in right now as I'm slipping along this this super icy path. Yeah, buddy. What the hell are the chances of that? Who knows, small world, but hey, really awesome to interact with my fans. He's been a subscriber of the channel for some time now. And uh, you know, it really makes it hit at home. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's always a great time. I gotta say, I enjoy snow fun, especially when it's in a non-salted area. I can't believe that I found that. That's very rare. I gotta say that I wish that I could find that more often. Gotta say, one of the struggles of vlogging in the wintertime is that your hands get very, very cold. Because now I have the Corvette and everyone's like, oh great, you know, it's all gonna be Corvette content. Like I said, I've always wanted to get C6 Z06 and now that I have it, I'm clearly very excited about sharing the content that's going to be associated with my ownership of that thing. And the truck content is not gonna go anywhere. What I wanted to do with this video is just talk you guys through some of the modifications that I have on the trucks. It's a 2015 LML Duramax. It's an LTZ. It's clearly white on the exterior. It's Coco Dune on the interior, which is like a tan and brown. Very, very nice. Um, I've done a lot to the truck over the course of the three years that I've had it. It's currently got I think 40,000 miles on. I think we just crossed 40,000 miles. Uh, as we have new subscribers that come to the channel, they tend to ask those questions, right? You know, what's done to it? And I've done a few of these videos in the past. So to begin, we have a Cognito four to six inch lift kit on the truck. It's a very great lift. I've had it on for about two and a half years, installed it when this truck had, I think 300 miles on it. So it's been with the truck pretty much from day one. Improves the ride quality and gives you that added lift height to run a bigger tire if you so desire. Wow, that's kind of a ironic rhyme. <laughs> We've got 22 by 14 American Force wheels. They are Trax SS8, a gloss black with milled accents, i.e. the windows here. Uh, we have a set of Shifted Industries extended lug nuts, spike lug nuts on the truck. Tires are 355, 40, 22 Nitto trail grapplers, which means they're 14 inches wide and about 33.3 inches high. Back here, we've got a set of Whirly Custom Fab traction bars. They are in illusion purple. It's a two inch bar. Got very nice heim joints on them and they are a mounting bracket in the rear. It's a weld up front mount in the rear to the U-bolts. We've got a fast lift pump on the truck sitting right there. The rear end, I actually repainted the rear end of the truck because of uh, obviously the salt and bullshit that I deal with up in this area it started to turn a not so preferable color so i painted it looked pretty good i uh, also have a set of horn blasters train horn kits up here it's a conductor special 544 nightmare kit i know that is a mouthful but that is that it's a five gallon tank with four horns when i got the truck it had the old gm tow mirrors on them, standard kind of black all plastic ones uh did upgrade those to the new generation tow mirrors which are a very nice addition we did color match on the front and the rear of the truck this is all actually vinyl wrap i've had the vinyl wrap on the truck for about two years. It's holding up pretty good. Uh, starting to show some signs of wear though. Like right here, it chipped a little bit and right here it's peeling back. Uh, can't complain though for having it for as long as I have. Right there is a little air bubble. Uh, but overall, 
very good. You know, it's not that hard to maintain and uh, gives you that color matched look if you so desire it. We've also got the Cognito upper control arms, which are an essential. Again, guys, the ride quality improved 10 times. I mean, I'm not using that multiplier lightly here because this truck rode very harsh stock. Now on the interior, you guys clearly know that I have the Edge CTS2 because I was complaining about it earlier. Now, of course, under the hood is where things get interesting and sexy. Up under here is really where the magic happens. We've got a Whirly Custom Fab turbo kit on here. It's in Illusion Purple as well, so it matches the traction bars that you saw earlier on the back. So it's an S369 fixed vane turbo. It's the SXE model, uh, I guess so, the newer, one of the newer S300 series. Uh, the S369 is the best of both worlds when it comes to the 300 or 400 series turbos. Uh, it's small enough that it spools relatively quickly, not a lot of lag but it carries boosts throughout the entire RPM spectrum. This thing pulls like an SOB. And of course, all of the other kind of supporting mods you guys can see from an LML perspective, how much room we have for activities in here. That's due to obvious reasons. I won't go into those specifics right now. Almost fell off the truck. It is amazing. If anybody out in the audience is considering going a turbo kit route on their LML or Duramax period, go Whirly Custom Fab guys and tell that that Jack sent you. She is not happy. I gotta give Grandma credit. She off-roaded like no problem in that camera. So from a lighting perspective, haven't done too much stock headlights, stock taillights, which you guys rag on me for all the time, but I do like factory lighting. I do have Morimoto HIDs. They're 35 watt, 5500K temperature. Back in the day when I did these, the LEDs were starting to become the latest and greatest thing, and now they are. From an exhaust perspective, we're running a five to seven inch tip off the rear axle dump. Five inch exhaust straight through straight pipe. Yes, I do have my factory running boards on because I like them. They serve as a great barrier of defense to the lower rocker of the truck because of the wide wheels. I mean, you guys can see how wide the wheels are. On the rear, again, stock taillights. I like the stock taillights. I don't like to go too above and beyond, if you will. I think that the uh, OEM styling of this truck is outstanding as most vehicles that I typically purchase. I like the OEM styling and I try to just enhance it a little bit. But now being that it's absolutely freezing outside, I decided to migrate into the truck. Uh, we do have tint on the front windows as well as the rear windows. It's 15% tint. Um, all the way around, including a 5% brow. Now this brow is a little bit deeper than that of your normal, which would be like right about here. Uh, it's eight inches on its deepest part on driver side, passenger side, and it's about six inches in the middle. This is a Passport 8500. I have it hardwired, so the wire runs down and connects into the fuse box down on the driver side. Is I fabbed up a uh, mounting spot here. This is just 3M tape, double-sided stick tape. This is the mute button for the Passport, which is very nice, especially when you're picking up that ghost radar. On the right side of the steering column, we have the DSP-5 switch that is through PPEI. And just to jump outside again real quick, you get a very unique exhaust note with that of a fixed vane turbo versus that of the stock turbo, which was a variable vane. Um, I do really like interacting with the driving dynamic of a fixed vane turbo. Way different than that of a variable vane turbo because obviously it doesn't spool up as quickly, uh, but it's nice just because from a, a mechanical perspective, it's a way simpler turbo uh, and there's really not much that could go wrong with it uh, versus that when you introduce all the electronics of a variable vane turbo, you have a little bit more of a uh, complex dynamic if you will. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna jump back in the truck and I'm gonna defrost my hands because it is very, very chilly out. I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna power wash the truck as well because I can't let the salt sit on it. It just drives me nuts. I would really appreciate if you guys could give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you haven't already or you're stopping in for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. And remember guys that the Ultimate Enthusiast giveaway number two is now live. We're giving away $2,000. All that information is in the first link in the description below. Take care, have a great night, and we'll see you in the next video.